Now, there can be reactions where you have an element and you don't react it with another element, you might react it with a compound. Okay, and what, what will happen is that the element will, if, it, if it's meant to react, and, and sometimes reactions happen, and sometimes they actually don't, but we always write down the equation, we'll figure that out afterwards. The element will actually replace the like element in the compound, and then we'll make a reaction called a single replacement reaction. So let's write one of those. All right. So, zinc is placed in a silver nitrate solution, and now we're getting into those polyatomic ions. Okay, so zinc, ZN solid, reacts with, is placed in a silver nitrate solution. Silver is Ag with a positive one charge. Now, where do you go for this? Nitrate. Well, you look on your chart for nitrate, which isn't, of course, going to be on your periodic table, because when you look for N, you're going to find nitride, which is N with a three negative charge, but that's not nitrate. When you see something that ends in eight or ite, you are going to be looking for a polyatomic ion chart. And that chart right there is going to be able to help you to determine what nitrate is. Alphabetically listed, usually, you're going to find nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. Now, what does that mean? It means that the Ag, which is positive 1, is coming together with one whole thing, NO3, that has a one negative charge. It says, I want one electron. Well, the Ag says, I want to lose one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of reaction between those two to make that compound. Now, don't think that that's a three negative charge. It's an NO3 with a negative one charge. Sometimes there's a two negative and a three negative there. Not in this case. So one reacts with one there, positive with a negative one, and you get silver nitrate AgNO3. It says it's a solution. When you see solution, don't put liquid. Solution means dissolved in water. And so you're going to make this dissolved in water by putting Aq, which is aqueous, which means dissolved in water. All right. What's it going to form? I got to crush it all up in that, on that side over there. Zinc solid reacts with silver nitrate solution. Zinc is a metal. And so is silver. And because both of them are positively charged ions called cations, they don't bond together. The cation from here, which is what this is when it reacts in a compound, it's not a cation right now, it's just zinc metal, it's going to go with the anion or the negative ion on the other side. So, which one of these is the anion, the NO3 with a negative one charge? Retain its original charge when you're putting the compounds together on this side. What is the charge of zinc on the periodic table? Because you have to look it up. You just can't take for granted that it's just going to be Zn goes with the NO3. Uh-uh. Zn is a two positive charge. So you've got to actually put together with the charge Zn with a two positive and NO3 with a negative one. And that's going to make Zn bracket NO3 bracket two. What? What's this bracket? You need two NO3s. So whenever you have a polyatomic ion, and you have more than one of them. You put brackets and you put that number that you need. Hey, Kim guy, what if you only need one? Do you, can you put brackets anyway? No. Could we anyway? No. Could we? No. You do not put brackets around a polyatomic ion unless you need more than one of them. Yeah, that's what you get here when the zinc cut comes together with a nitrate. Now, how do you know what its state of matter is? Well, it happens to be aqueous. Now, how do you know that? Well, here's the thing. In solution, lots of ions will precipitate out as solids, or they will remain at, in solution. And you'll generally be given, like this data booklet that we have here in Alberta, a chart that actually has on it a solubility, well, this is a solubility table, and where it says slightly soluble and low solubility comp says soluble compounds and low solubility compounds. Low solubility means solid. And soluble compounds or highly soluble compounds are ones that when they form in solution, well they don't really form, they just stay aqueous. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to look at a solubility chart and you're going to find something like, in this case, the nitrate ion way up here in the list of ions and when you look down, it says all are very soluble. That means all are aqueous. 
because this is your aqueous column going across and generally the one that's a low solubility compound or slightly soluble, that's the one going across this way and that's going to be uh, your precipitates or your solvents. Hey, guess what? It says nitrate, all are aqueous and none are solid in solution. When the concentrations are like something called 0.1 moles per liter. So these charts are kind of relative. They give you a relative type of solubility. They don't really tell you um, the real truth all the time. But that comes later too. I say that a lot, don't I? It comes later, but it will. So this is an aqueous compound. Why? Nitrates never form precipitates in solution in our type of level of chemistry that we're doing. Oh wait, I'm sorry I don't have enough room there, but I'll do better the next time. What's going to happen here? You've got the silver now saying, well, who do I go with? You just go by yourself. And so it goes plus AG comes off as a solid. Now, how do you do this one? You're going to have to balance it. Well, to finish it off, you've got to balance it. Okay. One ZN, one ZN, one silver, one silver. Now watch, don't break it up. Keep it together because the nitrates are consistent from one side to the other. One NO3 here, two NO3s here. Put a two in front. Now you got two silvers, put a two in front. Now it's balanced. It's all good, that's good. Okay, now let's do another one here where in this case we have a single replacement reaction but the thing that we're replacing is the negative ion called the anion. So, bromine is poured into a sodium iodide solution. What's bromine? Bromine is, hey, it's Br2 because it's in group 7. And it says poured into, and by the way, you can check on your periodic table, it's a liquid at room temperature. Reacts with sodium iodide solution. Sodium is Na positive. I, in group 17, is 1 negative. That's not I2, remember, because it's bonding to something. So what are we going to do? It's going to be Na positive with I negative forms NaI aqueous because it says solution. Now, some people will be tempted and go, well, the Br goes with the I. <laughs> the anions, of which both of those are because they're negative ions, they're both in group 17, you do not put them together. It's cation with anion, and the cation is always written first. The positive is written first. So, bromine is going to go with the sodium. Now, sodium is a positive one charge. What do you do with the bromine? It's not Br2 anymore. It's in group 17. It's a negative one charge. So you've got to put the sodium together with the bromide. Na positive, Br negative is NaBr. You look on a solubility chart to see if this right here as a state of matter is going to be solid because it's an ionic compound and it precipitates out of solution or does it stay aqueous? Well guess what? When you look at a solubility chart generally the first one, the first column going, well the first column going down, yeah, okay, it'll have group 1 in it which is group 1A of the periodic table. Guess what? Sodium's in there and it says all are aqueous. None of them are precipitates. So here's the deal. Whenever you see nitrate, it's always aqueous. Whenever you see an element in group one, it's always aqueous. A, Q. What goes off by itself? I does. But wait, group 17 or 7A. No group 7. It's a 2. Iodine's a solid at room temperature. Now, in solution, it probably stays a little bit aqueous, but you can get away with just saying this. No, nope, room temperature, we're going to put solid. That's just fine. Go for it. That's great. So guess what? We've got an equation. We've got to balance it. We've got two BRs. We've got one BR. Put a two there. No, don't you dare. Don't dare put a two there. You've got to put a two in front. Two NAs now. Two BRs. Balance. Two NAs. Two NAs. Two I's. Uh -huh, two I's. It's balanced. One, two, two, one. Okay. That's single replacement reactions. Now, what happens when you have a compound in a compound? Well, that's called...